Welcome to my library, dear guest. My name is Cole, and I will be your storyteller. It's, um... It's been a while, huh? <laughs> Only about, let me see... Ten months. Okay, okay, just read this community post. It goes over everything, and I won't have to waste your time. Now, it is finally time once more for... RPG Horror Stories. I did not intend for that to be my comeback. I have another thing I'm working on, but that'll probably be a while longer. But here we are. Guess I just missed it. So, what do we have to look forward to today? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Players complaining about humans with average intelligence, and the DM flipping out about a gay character. Lovely. Let us begin. Story number one. DM gets blamed because bandits act like intelligent human beings. By the author, Asterion del Toro. After one or two adventures together, the party was contracted by the town guard to deal with some bandits who had been ambushing travelers to and from the boonies. Walking along the road, they run into a camp of ne'er-do-wells. Rough-looking guys, the DM says, set up in tents along the side of the road. As the party approaches, the ruffians laugh at what was apparently a dirty joke. The party's face hails the men who get quiet all of a sudden. After some small talk, the face tells them that he and his fellows are looking for the bandits troubling the road. One of the toughs, a gruff man with only one good eye, replies, You don't say. Tension hangs in the air. Yes, says the face. Would you happen to know anything about that? What are you implying? One eye answers. Well, the face says, if you've been camped out here for a while, you've probably seen something. Or maybe you heard from some people who were attacked? DM isn't sure where this is going. Face is being very friendly and none of the players seem to be expecting a fight. DM asks for a perception check. Everyone passes, and DM tells them that these men look like real tough customers. Most of them have scars, all of them are wearing patchy leather armor, all of them are armed with worn but lethal looking weapons, whom they also have their hands on. Most of them have recent cuts and superficial wounds, and all of them are keeping their eyes on the party. Face smiles, understanding what the DM's getting at, or so he thinks. In fact, from the look of it, you seem to have had some trouble recently. Maybe a scuffle with these same bandits. One Eye stares, saying nothing but looking a little confused. Since you're not dead, you obviously managed to drive them off, yes? Face continues. Did you happen to see which way they fled? Another party member cuts in. If you can help us find their hideout, we'll gladly give you a share of the reward. One Eye tells the party to hold on a second, then confers with his men out of the party's earshot. After a minute or so, One Eye comes back. Yeah, we tussled with them, he says. In fact, we know exactly where they're holed up. They're too tough for us, but you lot look like you wouldn't have much trouble. Come on. We'll show you. A quick hike takes the party and their new comrades into the woods, to a cave on the hillside. A short distance inside the cave, they come to a rope bridge stretched across a chasm. One Eye tells the party to go first. There's trouble on the opposite side. The party does so. Are the bandits close? The face asks. Very close, One Eye says. In fact, they're right behind you. And the bandits cut the ropes, 
collapsing the bridge and sending the party tumbling into the chasm, all while one eye and his crew laugh. The players immediately call shenanigans on the DM. What the hell? The face says. Why are they betraying us for the bandits? Those were the bandits, the DM says. Bullshit, says another player. If they were bandits, they would have attacked us on sight. You're just making shit up to punish us. Why would they have attacked you? Asks the DM. They're bandits, the player replies. It's what they do. They attack people on roads and take their stuff. Another player cuts in. Yeah, it's a dick move, man. Feels like you just decided they were the bandits on a whim. Everybody is glaring at the DM. Everybody is pissed. Look, bandits are like predators, the DM says. They don't attack the strongest prey, but the weakest. The people who travel this road are small peddlers and farmers. You are mercenaries with weapons, armor, and magic. They're not going to pick a fight with you if they can avoid it. Fuck off, you're just a shit DM. How are we supposed to fight them if they won't attack first? You could have attacked first, the DM says. You're working for the town guard, and they're obviously... All the more reason they would attack us, a player cuts in. The DM looks around in disbelief. He seems to be the only one at the table who finds it plausible for professional criminals to assess risks and exercise discretion. DM quickly moves on with a party landing at the bottom of the pit, forgetting about fall damage to mollify them which segues into a dungeon crawl to get back to the surface. In the end, the players consider it a satisfying session, but to this day they consider this incident to be a huge gaffe on the DM's part. They can't comprehend that a bandit could be anything other than an automaton who sees adventurers and flies into a homicidal rage to shake down a heavily armored party for a few coins to buy dinner. Heaven forbid that the NPCs be at least as intelligent as the players. TLDR. Party fails to recognize obvious bandits because they don't attack immediately, get led into a trap, then blame the DM for making the bandits behave like they can actually think. Okay. I'm going to be mean for a moment. I think the ones truly lacking intelligence at this table are the players, because how did they not see this coming? Yes, right, because you are a bandit, you must hereby forfeit your brain, good sir. That's the rules. Look, the enemies in a TTRPG played by a human DM will not act like NPCs in, I don't know, Skyrim. Just wait until they find out that even the bandit's stat block says that they have average human intelligence. Which may be more than some of the characters the players are playing as. Or all of them. And that feels mean to say. I don't actually think these guys are that stupid. But it just felt so obvious to me reading it. The DM was giving them so many hints and it was just not subtle. Maybe the situation was totally different at the table, and maybe they really have never dealt with actually intelligent enemies before. But if that is the case, then take this as a learning opportunity instead of getting mad at the DM. Do you want all your combat to be monotone and boring? And the fact that he felt the need to appease them, I understand. I can be a pushover too. But man, next time let them feel their mistakes. Now, on to our next story. Story number two. DN Can't Handle a Gay Character. By the author F. Pong Dan. 
I recently told this story to my game group, and it made me realize I should probably put it here too. Not a super long story, but funny slash sad. This guy was running an exalted game. For those that don't know, you play mythic demigods in an ancient world. It should be noted that this GM, as a player, frequently found excuses to play female characters and they were always, well, exactly the stereotype you're imagining. Not relevant to the story, but amusing as background for what follows. I had decided to play a gay character. It wasn't super relevant most of the time, since the game was heavy combat, adventure, and light on RP. But I thought it would add fun background to my character. Basically, he was an ability who wasn't interested in siring a bunch of heirs and continuing his family dynasty due to his sexual preferences, so he'd been kicked out into a life of adventure. Unless it came up, you probably wouldn't realize he was gay, since I wasn't doing any sort of cartoony stereotypes or anything. At one point, we encountered some sort of fey illusion master, and part of this NPC's initial attempts to flatter slash seduce slash manipulate us was to create a whole harem of illusionary super hot women to act like honeypots. The GM asked us to make some sort of role to resist these efforts, and I asked if it was a magical, mind-affecting thing, or just regular, if high-powered, seduction. He said that it didn't matter, so I asked him if I should roll at all. I figured maybe this was a neat way to get an advantage over the NPC, making him think he'd gotten the better of all of us while I was actually unaffected. I'd pretend to be seduced in-game, of course, but I'd have the advantage of not actually being distracted. The GM clearly didn't remember this aspect of my character, or maybe he never read my backstory to begin with, because he asked for an explanation. I said, well, this NPC might not know this unless he's been spying on us for a while or can read minds or whatever. But my character isn't attracted to any of these illusions. He's gay. What I genuinely expected was just for the GM to retcon a little and say that the Fae had conjured both male and female illusions. After all, they were magical creations anyway. There was no reason he couldn't have brought attractive men into existence to specifically distract my character as well. Instead, the GM lost his shit. The same guy threw a tantrum about players playing characters who didn't share their own sexual preferences. He didn't outright say he couldn't handle a gay character, just that since I wasn't gay, I shouldn't play one. Of course, 100% of his female characters were lesbians. Duh. I objected to this on grounds that it was, you know, Total bullshit. And he just cancelled the whole game. Oh well, no great loss. Damn, that escalated quickly. Okay, so first off, why should you not be able to play a character that does not match your sexuality? You are playing a character. Acting. It does not whatsoever reflect who you are or what you're into. Unless you want it to be, I suppose. There was no reason to throw a tantrum, to be honest. I will say I do not know the guy or how it all played out at the table. Additionally, though, you are not playing a roleplay-focused game, so really, what does it matter? It has evidently never even come up before. It's just a strange situation, especially for the DM to just cancel the entire campaign over this. That's just really blowing it out of proportion, but yeah, probably for the best, if that was enough to set him off. Also, wow, the hypocrisy when the DM was RPing lesbians. Because if it isn't okay to RP a character with a different sexuality, do you really think it's okay to RP a character with a different gender? Or 
maybe the DM just wanted to say something with that. That's it for today's stories. I hope you enjoyed your stay and that I will see you again soon, for there are always more stories to be shared.